out of all of the new iPhone 13s I have been testing and reviewing, the iPhone 13 Pro has the highest probability of becoming my next phone. However, I have fallen in love with the 13 mini's light and small form factor, but the features on the iPhone 13 Pro cannot be ignored, and in my opinion this is the better and more usable phone than the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Although the iPhone 13 Pro is a huge upgrade over my iPhone 10, I can't help but still feel slightly disappointed. A lot of the exciting features have not met my expectations. ProRes video is not even available yet at launch, and the new cinematic mode doesn't even look that great, and I think is completely overhyped. Unlike last year, the smaller 13 Pro models don't lose features over the 13 Pro Max. You still get the same cameras, a 15 Bionic processor, and a ProMotion OLED screen. The only difference being display size and battery life. I think this is a nice pro-consumer move by Apple, and it doesn't force you to have to buy the most expensive phone if you just want the best cameras. As hard as this may be to believe for some viewers, judging from my last video, ridiculously huge phones aren't for everyone. Comparing the Pro's design to the very similar iPhone 13, the 13 Pro is definitely the sexier and nicer looking device. But as an everyday carry, the regular iPhone 13 has many advantages. It is much lighter, and the glossy rear of the phone, although susceptible to fingerprints, is easier to grip, compared to the matte which feels slippery on the 13 Pro. But to be fair, does not collect fingerprints and is more aesthetically pleasing. Another key benefit is the difference in camera bump. The 13 Pro has a huge camera bump, which causes excessive rocking when placed onto a desk. Although attaching a MagSafe wallet can resolve this. I also noticed around the volume and mute buttons, the 13 Pro attracted a lot of skin oils, grease, and dirt because of its shiny finish. Whereas the matte on the 13 and 13 mini have no signs of this. I feel like this could be a horrible issue to deal with after a year of owning and using the phone, especially if you don't like to put cases onto your iPhones. The new ProMotion display is brilliant. App animations feel more responsive and smoother. Gaming as well will see huge benefits, just like on the iPad Pros. However, during my testing, many apps are still waiting to be updated for 120 hertz support. A cool thing about ProMotion is that it is adaptive, changing the refresh rate to match the task you're doing. This helps optimize battery life and usage. A key spec of the iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max is the brighter displays. With 1000 nits of brightness, which is 200 more than the 800 nits on the regular iPhone 13s, you should expect to get better outdoor performance. However, the HDR peak brightness remains the same across all models at 1200 nits. Testing both phones side by side at max brightness watching SDR content, I genuinely could see no real world differences between the screen brightness on both of the phones. Upgrading from the iPhone 10, the cameras were the most exciting thing for me. Taking videos with my iPhone is now an option, and since purchasing the 13 Pro, I have been integrating a lot of handheld first person wide angle shots into my YouTube videos. This is thanks to the great image stabilization on the iPhone 13s and how quick they are to film with. I have a full video filmed entirely on every new iPhone 13 if you want to see real life camera comparisons across every model. Photos also look great and definitely encourage me to post more images on Instagram straight from my phone. The new photo styles is interesting, letting you create custom camera looks. This is not the same as applying a filter as it is adjusting camera settings before capturing the image. I think the user interface needs to be simplified and expanded upon with some additional settings added to make this feature worth using. The three camera lens option works very well, giving higher quality photos than ever before with three different focal lengths. I was satisfied with the photos taken from each lens, however I did notice some bad image distortion happening on the ultra wide. Another area that was frustrating was switching between the lenses while filming a video. If you want to zoom in from ultra wide to telephoto, there is this horrible lens jump that happens midway, which I think looks really bad as the lens perspective misaligns mid shot and is very abrupt. If you're buying the iPhone 13 Pro with the intention to use it for two to three years, I think some of its flaws such as the inclusion of the lightning connection and a still pretty large notch, although minor, may force you to spend money on a future iPhone upgrade sooner than you really need to. The iPhone 13 Pro is a brilliant phone, it just doesn't feel new. If you want to know why the iPhone 13 Pro is better than the 13 Pro Max, you'll want to watch this video next.